We're on the Casante uh, case. If I could have the two officers over here and uh, and uh, Mr. Costanza, you can have a seat right here. Um, I conditionally accept your offer to come over right here if I can en engage in these proceedings with all my res all my reservations and unalienable rights. Well, no one's. No one's taking away any rights, so... Right, but I, I only will come up here conditionally if, if I am able to do so with, if, without any reser with all my full reservations and all of my unalienable rights. Well, I don't know what your reservations are, but... Right, but I will only... Then that, that is my condition of coming over here. Well, so far you haven't even told me your name, but... Uh, so, look... Um, it's going to work like this. Um, if you don't want to come forward um, in front of the bar and sit at the defense table and uh, and uh, um, and put on your case, um, then you're going to be found responsible by default. Um, um, what um, the city's here and they're ready to proceed. I mean, if you're not if you're not going to participate. Um, it's the same thing as if you're not here. So, um, and you, and I, so far I don't even really know who you are. Um, you've, you've, you've held up a piece of paper and said that that's Thomas Costanzo. Well, that, yeah, that, that doesn't make right any here. sense. It's, it's Thomas Mario Costanzo in all capital letters. Okay. This is the defendant right here. Well, and uh, is, it, is that you? No, this is a piece of paper. Okay. And I am a sentient human being. Okay. So I will come up here, and I, I, I fully agree to come up here, as long as I can come up here with all my uh, unalienable rights. Well, you, you certainly have all your rights. Okay, and they're all my unalienable rights are still, are still intact if I pass through this bar here, correct? Sure. Okay. All right, this is citation number 1412-6858, State v. Thomas Costanzo. And there's a charge of not having a white light to the front um, and also not having a driver's license required for a moped. And that uh, previous judge has amended that to 283151A um, for driver's license required for moped. And the white light to the front is cited under 28817A. And uh, all right, and so... I've got, uh, so Mr., you can sit down, Mr. Costanto. I conditionally accept your offer to sit down. Can I sit down right here? Sure. All right. I, I, I conditionally accept your offer to remove my hat on bona fide claim that I am obliged to do so. Well, yes, it's a requirement of the court. You're, you're wearing a baseball cap. Just for but the is that a bona fide claim? I wish to see a bona fide claim that I am required to do so. Well, my request to you, it's standard in the courtroom. It's, um, it's customary that uh, baseball caps be removed. So I'm, I'm asking you to remove your baseball cap. Okay, if I do not remove my baseball cap, what, what, uh, what can happen to me? I'm not going to do anything to you if you don't. Okay, well, it. I prefer to leave my hat on. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right. Um, so the way the hearing works is this. The officers will go first. Um, they'll state their observations. Um, you'll have an opportunity to ask them questions. Uh, when they're through testifying, then it's your turn to go. And that's when you uh, talk to me and tell me what you want me to know. Um, if you want to call witnesses, you can do that. Um, if you have some exhibits or some documents you want to present, you can do that. Okay? Did you already receive the information I sent you? Well, all right. Now, I do have, I do have a lot of documents in the file. I think you had more than one mailing. And uh, so uh, one mailing... Uh, was opened by the clerk, and um, those documents are in the file, and I've looked through those documents. Um, I won't say that I've read them word for word because there are a lot of documents here, and um, quite frankly, um, 
most of it didn't make any sense to me. But, uh, but those documents are in the file. But you did send another mailing, uh, which you wrote on the front, private viewing only. And you sent that to me. Yes. Um, well, I can't look at something in private. Um, this is um, uh, this is a public file. I mean, it's the file in your case, which is open to the public. The public can come in and look at this file. Um, this hearing is public. Yeah, it's being recorded. Um, and um, if somebody wants to order the disc of the hearing, they can order the disc of the hearing. Um, it would have to be a very unusual situation before um, something could be kept secret. Uh, well, this is a private proceedings. matter. I want to have the. I want to have the. I want to. Uh, I'm here to settle the matter privately using my unlimited account with the treasury. Well, all right, but it's and not. And that's why I'm here to settle this account. Okay, but and and have and have and have my unlimited account with the treasury pay off this entire. You know, settle and discharge this entire account. All right. Well. And just, that's what you're here to do. Okay. Now you have to let me talk. So. I am. I, all right. I, I didn't realize that. Was I interrupting you, sir? No, it's all right. So. Just so you know, this is not a private proceeding. It's a public proceeding. And what I'm going to do, these, the, um, this manila envelope um, with documents inside that says private viewing only, I'm going to give this back to you uh, because um, um, it's not something that I can look at in private. Um, if, you, um, if there's something in there you want to present during the hearing, you can present it during the hearing. So you want to come get your documents back? I gave them to you so we could settle this account in private so we don't have to waste the valuable resources of the public to settle this account. Okay. Because all this can be done in the private without any help from, you know, going into the public, and this all can be settled without having the expense of having these two fine officers here to settle this account. All That's right. what I want to do is I want to settle the account. Okay. And, and dragging me into court when I want to settle the account, there's no reason to do that. That's I, why it's a private matter. All right. I heard you now. Now let me talk. Um, so what I'm going to do with the envelope here... Uh, you don't want to take it back. Um, I'm just going to put it in the file, and it's going to stay sealed in the file. Um, so, all right. Um, then uh, um, we've got three witnesses here, uh, so I need to swear you all in. Um, and uh, that means I need to have the three of you raise your right hand. Do we have a Bible? Um, we need to have a Bible in order to have a swearing in, because that's what we're swearing on. No, you don't. We don't. You don't have to swear on a Bible. Um, you can. Uh, you just have to affirm that you're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And that's what I need you to do. If you want to, if you have brought a Bible with you and you want to swear on a Bible, that's fine. I want them to swear on a Bible. Well, that's not a legal requirement. It's not. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to swear in the two officers. So if I could have you both raise your right hand. Uh, you both affirm the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and Mr. Costanzo, um, and I'm going to try to swear you in. Uh, can you raise your right hand? I. Am I under oath? I don't understand what's going on here. Well, you're not under oath until you raise your right hand and swear. I understand, but why affirm. do I need to do that? Because... Um, it's a legal requirement that you affirm that you're going to tell the truth before you give testimony. Um, I haven't offered any testimony. Okay, that's true. Can I do that if I intend to offer testimony? Yes. Okay, yes. So let's, I'll, I'll waive that benefit for now. Is that okay? That's fine. Because I don't understand what's going on here, so I'm, well, I'm going to ask you for maybe some help. Well, we're having a hearing. Okay, I, know, but I, just, I don't want to do anything that's improper. No, that's fine. Okay. Okay. I don't want to, but I don't want to do anything that I'm not required to do either. Oh, okay. Yeah, just so long as you understand that you can't give testimony until you're first sworn in. Okay. All right. So uh, what we're going to do here is start with one of the officers, and which one would like to go first? I will, Your Honor. All right. And uh, for the record, could you please identify yourself? My name is Officer Jeffrey Meal, M-I-E-L, badge number 9114 with the City of Phoenix. And could you please spell your last name? M I E L. All right, thank you. And you may proceed. On uh, 12 15, 2010, at approximately 23 19, 
or 11, 19 hours. Um, myself and Officer Bartley were traveling in a fully marked patrol vehicle. We were at 1400 East Indian School Road, traveling eastbound, uh, when we saw the uh, a moped, which was being uh, driven in the curb lane. Object. He's making a legal determination. Well, and what's the legal determination? He doesn't know if it's a moped or not. How is he able to determine well, it was a moped? Okay, so... Um, let's let the officer testify, and then uh, you'll have a chance to ask him questions. Can I ask and a question, then? Well, you're going to have an opportunity. I'm going to ask a question about the procedure, because I don't understand what's going well, on. Well, what's your question about procedure? If he makes a statement that is incorrect, what a, do, at what point do I get to rebut that? Can I not rebut the, 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 the problem as I see it, or I have to wait? Well, the problem, um, the procedure is this. He's going to testify. Right. You, you may disagree with a lot of what he says. Uh, then you'll have an opportunity to, to ask him questions. Um, and then later on, when both of the officers are, are, are through testifying, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have your opportunity to present your case. And that's when you can tell me about your disagreements with the officers. But for you to be able to testify, you're first going to have to be sworn in. I understand. But if he makes a misstatement or something I think is false, what, do I not get to make an objection? You make a note. You, okay. you can ask him a question about it, and then when it's your turn to present your evidence, uh -huh. um, you can tell me what the mistake is the officer made. Right. Well, I see on TV shows, you know, the, 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 the attorney will deal with someone saying something that's incorrect. The, the other attorney says, I object. So I want to object to the fact he's making a legal determination when I don't think he's qualified to make well, that you determination. Can, all right. And that's fine. You can make your objection. But okay. the all objection right. is overruled. I okay. Mean, thank the, you. The officer is testifying that what he saw was a moped, and, and we can get into that in more detail. Okay. Um, all right, officer, you may proceed. Okay. As I was saying, we saw a moped traveling at approximately 1400 East Indian School Road in an eastbound direction in the curb lane on the roadway. Um, as we passed the moped, I saw a blinking white light to the front. Um, and also the vehicle, we uh, stopped it. Object, it's not a vehicle. No, the, the objection is overruled. Okay. Um, as the vehicle was entering the restricted canal area by um, activating our emergency lights and sirens, the vehicle did stop. Uh, once we approached the driver of the vehicle... Object, I was not driving, I was not in commerce. He has no way to prove that. No, the objection is overruled. Once we approached the driver, we immediately explained his violation and why he was stopped, which was because the light on the front of his bike was not, or moped, was not steady. Um, we asked if the uh, driver who is sitting here to my right in the black and yellow shirt. Um, All right, and uh, the record may reflect the reference to, well, um, to the individual seating, sitting at the defense table in the courtroom. And you may proceed, officer. Okay. Um, we asked him if he had any weapons so that we could make the contact safe. Um, he refused to say yes or, yes or no to that question, which uh, gave us, you know, an indication that maybe this was not going to be a safe contact. Uh, unknowing whether he had a weapon or not and refusing to tell us. So um, he began to yell that we had no right to stop him and also told us that he is not part of our de facto government. Um, we had him place his hands on his head to conduct a pat down for weapon to make sure that all parties were safe during our investigation. Uh, during this time we were still asking him to make sure that he did not have weapons and he continued to refuse to answer that question, still not cooperating. Uh, Am I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. When we asked for his identification, uh, he refused to tell us first whether he had identification and where it was. Um, 
This went on for a few minutes asking for his identification. Eventually, because he is required to have a driver's license while driving a moped, um, he was placed under arrest for operator fail to provide ID. Um, we then uh, searched his person and the backpack which he was wearing looking for his ID, um, asking him to direct us to it. He uh, continued to direct us to uh, several pieces of paper and told us he wanted to serve us with some kind of uh, document. So you were served then? But did not say that his ID was anywhere. Eventually the ID was found. Um, it was an identification card and not a driver's license. After conducting a records check of that, um, it was discovered that his privilege was suspended. Okay, now so far as the ID card, um, was that um, was that the sort of ID card that, that you get from the Motor Vehicle Division? Yes, it was in Arizona. Okay, and, uh, and can you tell me, can you compare the ID card with the defendant and tell me the name? Yes, the ID card did have the name Thomas Mario Costanzo, uh, and the picture on the ID did match the defendant who was sitting there in the black and yellow shirt. Okay. And all of this occurred within the city of Phoenix. All right. I object. He has no uh, legal way to, or no way of proving that. Okay. There's no yeah. evidence to prove that. All right. And the record may reflect the reference to. Uh, the individual sitting at the defense table who's been identified by the officer is Thomas Mario Costanzo. Um, all right. Um, and you may proceed, officer. Um, I don't have anything further. He was just issued the citations uh, listed above, and uh, then he was uh, released okay. from that scene. All right. Um, you want to you want to tell me tell me anything about what what he was riding or driving or? Sure. It had a um, gas powered motor. It had pedals. So basically, it was a pedal bike with a gas powered motor. And the uh, bike, the engine made noise, and was propelling the vehicle, bicycle, whatever he wants to call it. Wasn't a vehicle object. Uh, down the street without his um, helping it by pedaling. All right. Um, and then do you have anything else you might have presented this time? I don't know. Okay, and is this location in the city of Phoenix? Yes. All right. Uh, Where's the evidence to prove that? I mean, wh what evidence does he have to prove that? Well, it's your turn to ask the officer questions. So if you want to ask them that question, you can do that. Well, I have questions for you first, I think. Well, I, I don't understand what's going on here. Well, what? Um, I think it's pretty clear what's going on. I, I, really? I think I've explained to you what's going on. If you have a specific question, you can ask. Well, tell me what's going on here. Because it looks to me like you guys are trying to rob me. Well? And I'm, I'm here to settle this case. I sent you my paperwork. I have an unlimited account with the Treasury. I asked you to settle it and discharge all everything here right now. I sent you that. Did you, and, and I've also had this my my paperwork showing with the registered tracking number. This is filed in the International UPU. RE 454-766-462 U.S. That was filed with the Treasury, the Secretary of State. It is also filed with the County of Pinal County. It's on the record. And it says here, by fee schedule, for um, unlawful arrest, illegal arrest, restraint, distraint, trespass, with or without a lawful, correct, or a complete Fourth Amendment warrant is $2 million in lawful U.S. silver dollars per occurrence, per officer, per agent involved. Okay. okay. So that's $4 million you owe me. All right. Well, now, so let me talk. And, this is, and, 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 and there is no excuse to the law. You know, ignorance right. is no excuse to the law. This might be scheduled, is, is published 
in the county of Pinal, and so I'd be happy to pay this, you know, settle this account, and you owe me four million dollars. All right, I listen to you now. So let me talk now. So um, it sounds like the documents you're talking about. Those are the documents that I have in the file here, mm -hmm. and I have gone through those through those documents. And uh, you're telling me that this amounts to a motion to dismiss, and uh, so um, I'll. I'll uh, take this as a motion to dismiss, and the motion to dismiss is denied. Um, so um, there's no uh, there's no legal basis here for uh, the charge to be dismissed, and so um, that motion will be denied. I keep telling you I want to settle this account. Okay. And I want you to settle the account. I have my bonds in place. Everything you know, I have my indemnity bond for for right here. Um, Three hundred million dollars. It's all. It's all been filed with Timothy Geithner. Okay, that's so fine. So you can just settle it off against that. All right. Now, uh, well, um, are you telling me you want to be responsible to the charges? No, I told. I keep telling you, I want you to settle the account. Okay. Through the treasury. Okay. So you don't. You understand what I'm talking about. I know you do. No, actually, I don't. But um, so. W we're proceeding with the hearing. We're now at the stage in the hearing where you can ask the first officer questions. Okay. And um, all right. Well, let's let's start. Okay. I, I just need to have it on the record that you do have my paperwork. This paperwork that I sent to you publicly, you do have that, right? And yes. you do know that it's been filed in the county of Pinal. It's and here. And it's all in the account, okay? And I want you to settle the account. So I'm asking you to, to please settle the account. Yeah, and the request is denied. Okay. That's all we need to hear. We'll take it up for appeal. Now, um, so you were served with my paperwork. You did touch the paperwork. So you were served, and you are, uh, you know, ignorance is no excuse for law. Are you aware of that? Is that a question? Yes. Can you rephrase it in a question form so I can answer it properly? So you, you realize you were served, correct? No. The night, and, and we entered into contract together, you and me. No, absolutely not. Oh, okay. Well, we did because we entered a contract. Is that a well, so let me explain how this works. Okay. Um, you may ask questions. Okay. Only questions. And the officer will give an answer. Okay. I'm okay. Sorry. Now, um, you may disagree with the answer, okay. and I'm sure you will. And then when it's your opportunity to testify, uh, then you can tell me about your disagreements with the officer. Okay. Um, so, so right now, we're not going to have a discussion okay, going I back apologize. and forth I'm or sorry. an argument. I'm sorry. I it's, apologize. It's all right. So ask your questions, and the officer will give his answer. Okay. Well, then, uh, how would you define the word drive? Please define that word for me. The word for drive. For the court. Operating a vehicle or moped or bicycle, you would be driving that. I think you have to be in commerce to be. I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have that with me. But okay. Um, okay. So, do you are you familiar with uh, ARS 2825-16? Not without it in front of me. You, I don't have it on my computer, so I can't. Um, uh, the only way I can I can't give you the paper because I don't have it printed out. You want to read it to him, or do you have the copy and you'll read it, or how would that work? All right, so you're referring to 282516, which has to do with motorized, electric, or gas-powered bicycles or tricycles. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Part um, C is, I think, the part that's prevalent here. All right, and, uh, and that's the definition of motorized, electric, or gas-powered bicycle or tricycle. So um, there's going to be a question here um, at least with regard to charge two, whether this is a motorized electric or gas powered bicycle or tricycle, or whether it's a moped. And mopeds are, um, the requirements for mopeds are stated under 282513. And um, so, and there, there is a definition of mopeds too, mm -hmm. and uh, which is, um, stated at 28101 uh, subsection 31. 
But uh, so, um, all right. So you have some more questions you want to ask the author? Well, should I read this, or how, how does this work? I mean, I well, can read it. No, there's no there's no reason to read it because okay, I because I. I'm sorry. Because I have a copy of it right here. Okay. If you have some questions you want to ask the officer about it, if you want to ask him um, specific questions about um, piston displacement or maximum speed or things of that sort, you can do that. Okay, well, let me, I'll read it and then I can ask him my question. Is that okay? Is that okay? Because I, I don't think. Why don't you say you're going to read it? What are you going to read? Well, I'll just say for purposes of this section. Uh, motorized electric or gas-powered bicycle or tricycle means a bicycle or tricycle is equipped with a helper motor that has a maximum piston displacement of 48 cubic centimeters or less and may be self-propelled at operating speeds less than 20 miles an hour, per hour. So my question is, based on this definition here, how do you classify what I had as a vehicle or a moped? That's your question for me. I guess. So you're asking me how I qualify what you have as a moped? Yeah, you're saying it's a moped, and I'm I'm reading this right here, and it says, how would you how are you determining? You're making a legal determination, um, and based on I wasn't even driving because I wasn't operating in commerce, and I well, don't just uh, let's stick to the definition now. Okay. So, so you want to know why the officer is calling it a moped. So, but no, he's, uh, yeah, he's calling it a moped, correct, yes. Right. So, okay. so officer, um, if you can answer that, why why are you calling the vehicle a moped? It is a gas-powered, self-propelled bicycle. Well, it's not a vehicle, either, but it's a bicycle. So that makes it a moped. A gas-powered, self-propelled. Okay, what is the definition, sir, of moped? What I just said. Is that the legal it's determination or is that your determination? It's my understanding okay. that it is a gas-powered, self-propelled bicycle. Well, I want to disqualify this witness because he's making legal determination and he's not qualified and to do not so. Well, j just so you understand. You're interrupting now. No, just so you understand how it works. Um, I'm the one who will make the legal determination. Okay. So one determination I'm going to have to make is whether this is a moped under 282513, or whether it's a um, gas-powered, uh, a motorized gas-powered bicycle under uh, 282516. But that's for me to okay. decide. Like I said, I don't understand what's going on. Okay. So, um, so it sounds like you're through with your questions for no, this. No, I'm not done. I get, I get my, it's my next question is, is the, the second I don't have the number in front of me, but it's about the uh, the light, and the statute doesn't say anything about it being flashing, non-flashing, steady. It just says it has to be visible from 300 feet. And I, how would you? A, you didn't even measure how far it was visible from, and so how are you able to give me this security instrument that that says I owe you money because you're just trying to steal from me? Well, that a question? Yes. All right. And so the question is, um, what what was it about the light that you uh, that caused you to believe it, it um, didn't satisfy the legal requirement, officer? It's my understanding of the law that the light needs to be a steady white light. It was not written for the violation of it not being visible from what I believe is the actual law says 500 feet. Um, and that wasn't a violation that he was written for, so that's not even in question. Okay. I, read the I read the statute. I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately. But it didn't say anything about whether it being steady or, not, or blinking or whatever. But, okay, okay, so that, that's I a legal that. argument, and that's okay. an argument so, you can make to well, me. Okay, so I guess my question is, is then, were you so bored and had nothing to do that the only thing you could think about doing was harass me for a blinking light. I mean, are you telling me you're okay. making $100,000 a year and the only thing that you can do is harass me for my light blinking? You're both of you there. $200,000 a year plus in, in cash and prizes and the only and you had nothing else to do but bother me because I, my light was blinking? Are you, are you serious? Okay, now, that's 
That's an argumentative question, and it's not really a proper question. Okay. I'm not going to allow that question. Okay. So try to confine yourself to factual matters. Do you have any other questions for this officer? Yes, my question is... Not arguments, but questions. What was the discussion prior to pulling me over between you and your partner? Hey, let's pull this guy over. No, well... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What was the discussion between you and your partner prior to pulling me over? I don't recall. You didn't have... Can either of you... Can you recall? Well, he hasn't testified yet. He'll be next, so... Okay. So you don't recall what the discussion... Did you discuss it? Did you discuss... Discuss what? Pulling me over. Or did you just... I don't know. I don't know what our exact discussion was. So you just flipped off. Were you driving or was he driving? I don't remember. He was driving. Okay, so who made the decision to pull me over? Okay, look. This isn't really relevant. The relevant issues here are whether a light is required to be steady or whether it can be a blinking light. That's the issue for charge number one. The issue for charge number two is whether this is a moped or whether it's a gas-powered bicycle. If it's a moped, then my understanding is it needs a license. If it's a gas-powered bicycle, then the way the statutes are written, it does not need a license. So those are the issues, and we don't really need to get into anything that's not pertinent to those. So let's go on to the next officer. You've been sworn in, officer. Do you wish to testify in this proceeding? Yes, I do. Okay. And so could you please identify yourself for the record? I'm Officer Bartley, B-A-R-T-L-E-Y, Phoenix Police Department in Maricopa County. And you may proceed. I wanted to testify that I was driving the vehicle when I saw the defendant in the black and yellow shirt driving a... Hi, Jack. The defendant is right here. This is the defendant right here. Well, I know, and we've already... Agree on that this is the defendant. Okay. And just for the record, you're showing a piece of paper. Oh, it's my birth certificate. This is the defendant right here. That's fine. We need to agree that this is the defendant. No, okay. I have the secured party creditor to handle his affairs. I've sent you all my papers. All right. You need to let the officer testify. Okay. And then you're going to have an opportunity to question the officer. So, all right. You may proceed, officer. Again, I saw the defendant driving what I... In commerce, on a city street in light traffic at 11 p.m. at night, operating what I believe to be a moped because it was traveling at a steady speed for what seemed to me like a long distance with no pedaling. I heard a gas-powered engine, and I could see the helper engine on the side of the bike. I pulled the bicycle over because as I was passing it, I saw... You said it was a bicycle. Was it a moped or a bicycle? Okay, sir. Well, okay, wait a minute. You're interrupting. Let him testify. They're confused. No, you're... And this is an argument that you can make to me, but let the officer testify. You'll have a chance to ask him questions, and you'll have a chance to make your arguments to me. Okay. Well, I just want to point out that they're confused. Is that fair? That's your argument. Okay. Okay. So, but now let the officer testify. Okay. No problem. You may proceed, officer. Okay. I did say bicycle. I believe it was a moped because it was a bicycle with a helper engine. So, if I say bicycle, I mean moped because it had a helper engine. When, as I passed it, I saw that it had a blinking light, and it's my understanding of the law that ARS requires it to be a steady white light to the front, visible from 500 feet. I decided at that point that I would use my lights and overhead siren to conduct a traffic stop. I stopped the defendant. He, upon being stopped, he put his hands up and said he wasn't part of our government. He also didn't provide an ID, and when I was able to find the ID upon arrest for providing me with no ID, it was an Arizona identification card, not a driver's license, as required by law for driving a moped. And it also showed suspended, which I found later is also a violation. I could have wrote him for suspended, but I did not. So, again, he had a steady, he had a blinking light rather than a steady light, driving a moped in commerce, and he had no driver's license. Okay. Do you know, 
do you have any idea how fast the vehicle uh, was was going? Uh, I didn't pace the vehicle. I would guess that it was probably going around 50 miles an hour. I was going 35, and I passed. Not 50. I'm sorry. You're on 20 miles an hour. I was going 35, and uh, I, I did pass it, but. At the speed that I passed, I believe it was about 20 miles an hour. Okay, and that's that's just a rough estimate. That would be a rough estimate, yeah. Okay. And uh, do you know do you know anything about the um, piston displacement of uh, what the defendant was riding? I asked the defendant about the engine on his bicycle. He answered no questions. It did have a it, it did have a gas tank on it and it had a pull string uh, to that led me to believe it was a gas engine. But again, I couldn't say if uh, I couldn't find the piston displacement labeled on the engine anywhere. Okay. Um, was this, uh, do you think that this is something that could also be self-propelled? In other words, when the engine is off, it could be self-propelled or? With human power? Yeah, with human power, with pedals. Were, were there pedals on it? There were pedals on it. Uh, I did not see if it could be operated with the pedals, but during its operation, I saw the pedals not used at all. Okay. So you're saying that maybe it could be operated with just the pedals, you're not sure? Yes, but during my contact it was not, the pedals okay. were not used at all. Um, and Do right. uh, you have anything else you'd, you'd like to tell me? No, no, Your Honor. Okay. Um, then, Mr. Costanzo, do you have any questions you'd like to ask this officer? Yes, sir. My question would be, if, if I can ask that question, my question would be, you mentioned that I was in commerce. How would you prove that? What evidence, or excuse me, what evidence would you have to support your, your claim? Can I answer this time? I, I want to rephrase my question, absolutely. Now. I believe that you were in commerce because you were on a city street and light traffic. And if you're operating on a city street with a vehicle, I believe you're in commerce. I don't believe that's relevant to our case, though. So that's a presumption. You made a legal determination and a presumption on your part, correct? I don't make legal determinations. The judge does. I know, but you said I was in commerce. It was my testimony that you're in commerce. Okay, and we don't need to spend too much time on this because it's not – i I'm not sure what you – mean by in commerce, but it's it's not something that's relevant to the charge here. Um, they've testified you were on the road. That's that's relevant. So, um, okay. Okay, so can I, I, do I get more questions? Or well, no? if they're relevant questions. Do I have the right to travel? Well, and that's... Wait, I'm asking him. I know, but it, it's not pertinent to the charges. I mean, no, I, I I mean you, you have a... Questions. You have but a do I have the right to travel? It's not pertinent to the charges. The question... I um, object. Well, that's fine, and your objection is noted on the record, but um, the, the question is not allowed. So okay. um, if, if you have some relevant questions, you can ask those. Do I have the right to exist? Okay, that's not a relevant question either. So, Do I have the um, right to eat? All right. Uh, so, Mr. Costanzo, you need to slow down a little bit here. So, you've asked three questions that aren't really relevant here. So, why don't you um, – I don't, it doesn't sound like you have any further pertinent questions for the officer. So, I think we're at the stage of this proceeding where you can present your case, and you need to decide whether you want to be sworn in or not so that you can testify. Okay, so I, I, I presented my, my paperwork to you. I've asked you several times to sell the account. Okay. And I've asked you, and, and, and so basically, if you cannot sell the account, I need to appeal this to a superior court of record. All right, and that'll be fine. You're not required to present a case. So, um, and so far as your, your paperwork, 
um, which you're telling me amounts to a motion to dismiss. I've already ruled that that motion is denied. So no, I'm not um, motion to dismiss. I'm telling. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to settle the account. Well, okay. What, how, however you want to phrase it. So if you're not able to do that. You need to talk to someone who can. Okay. So what what you're telling me is that you don't want to testify because you don't want to be sworn in. Is that correct? I don't know what I, I don't know what I would say. Okay. So, um, well, uh, raise your right hand and so no, I, 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 I don't I don't have anything to say. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm That's, fine. Say. That's fine. That's fine. Um, all right, so uh, you're not presenting a case. Um, the officers are presenting their case. Um, what I'm going to do here is take a short recess, and then I'll be uh, back out um, probably in about five or ten minutes with the ruling in the case. Okay, thank you. And we can go out later. All right, and so we're back on the record. Uh, this is the Thomas uh, Costanza case, uh, citation number 1412-6858. Mr. Costanzo is present. Um, the officers are present. Uh, Mr. Costanzo has his hand up in the air. Can I ask a question? Or uh, me? Or well, I think so. I, I, there's a couple things I forgot to ask. I was wondering if it would be possible to still Well, why don't, questions. yeah, let's just hold off on that for a moment. That, that may or may not be necessary. So let's, uh, first, I have some questions that I want to ask the officers. And um, so, um, and this would be a question directed at both officers. And so if one of you can answer, that's, that's fine. Um, do you, can you tell me, what the uh, whether this vehicle had a piston displacement of uh, 50 cubic centimeters or less? Can either one of you tell me that? Okay. No, Your Honor, I wasn't able to find the, uh, the CCs on it anywhere. I would guess that it would be less, but that would be a guess, of course. Okay. Um, so, all right. So, so you don't really know. You're saying that would be that would be a guess on your part. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, can you tell me whether um, it had a? Um, and actually, let me um, let me look at twenty one hundred one thirty one here. So. All right, and um, can either one of you tell me whether it had a brake horsepower of one and one half or less? No. It had normal bicycle brakes. I don't okay. know what the horsepower was. Yeah, okay. And um, I have a question. No, what? Just, okay, just I'm sorry. Wait. Um, and um, can either one of you tell me whether um, the, the vehicle had a, a maximum speed of 25 miles per hour, or whether, um, do either one of you know that, whether the maximum speed of it would be 25 miles per hour, or? No, sir. Okay, all right, we'll look. Um, the, the way this breaks down then on the second on the second charge, the, the driver license charge, um, if it's if the vehicle is a moped, um, the vehicle is required to have a license, um, and uh, that's that's under 28 25 13 um, 7, uh, which is what the second charge. Um, well, that's what the second charge started out as before before it was amended. But the verbal description is driver's license required for moped. Um, so so if it's so if it's a moped, um, it, it, it would require a driver's license. If it's a gas-powered bicycle, which is defined under 28.25.16, uh, then it would it it would not be required uh, 
to have a license. Now, um, the definition for gas-powered bicycle is at subsection C, and it, it talks about uh, that is operated at speeds of less than 20 miles per hour. Uh, the only evidence in this hearing has been uh, the officer said that their rough estimate was that the speed was 20 miles per hour. Um, the defendant uh, did not testify. Um, these matters are decided by the weight of the evidence, and so uh, the only evidence is indicating that the speed was uh, 20 miles per hour. Um, so uh, because gas-powered bicycle requires uh, a speed of less than 20 miles per hour, um, this is not going to qualify as a gas-powered bicycle. So um, that leaves two possibilities, that it could be a moped or it could be something else. Um, for it to be a moped, it has to meet the definition of a moped, which is stated at uh, 281031, and uh, that um, says that a, a moped is a bicycle that is equipped with a helper motor if the vehicle has a maximum piston displacement of 50 cubic centimeters or less, a brake horsepower of one and one half or less, and a maximum speed of 25 miles per hour or less on a flat surface with less than a 1% brake. Now, so uh, the, the problem here is that the evidence doesn't tell us um, that this um, a, a conveyance uh, does qualify as a moped. It, it, might, it might be a moped. It, it might be, be, be something other than a moped. And that's because uh, the evidence doesn't have enough information on uh, the piston displacement, the brake horsepower, or the, the maximum speed. And so, uh, so on the evidence, uh, the court is, is not able to say it's a moped, and so the court is, um, uh, and, that, the, and that's what the defendant is charged with, is not having a driver's license when um, driving a moped. Um, that's what the verbal description is. Um, it, it was amended to um, 3151A, which is um, simply not having a driver's license for a vehicle. Um, and, uh, well, okay. Uh, the, the verbal, at any rate, the verbal description should control. Um, it says driver's license required for a moped. Um, the evidence does not sufficiently reflect it's a moped. And so uh, uh, for that reason, uh, there needs to be a finding of not responsible on the, the moped charge and uh, on the, the driver's license charge. And so that will be the finding of the court. Um, then on charge number one, uh, which has to do with having a white light to the front that can be seen from 500 feet. And that's sites 28817A. And um, so let's take a look at that. And uh, now uh, the officers have testified that uh, they, uh, there, there was a light to the front. Um, uh, they are not saying that it could not be seen from 500 feet. They're just saying that uh, the light did not qualify because it was not a steady light. Now, uh, reading the language of the statute, um, the language, is, is, it talks about a lamp on the front that emits a white light visible from a distance of at least 500 feet, uh, and it says to the front, which is redundant, but um, to the front. And uh, so... Uh, what uh, the defendant had on his vehicle was a blinking light. And uh, it, the, the language of the statute doesn't say that the light has to be steady. Um, and, uh, um, and so uh, that, that doesn't appear to be a requirement. And, uh, and, and although this isn't part of the evidence in my, the case, and it's really not formally part of the reasoning that, I, that I'm giving here, but 
Um, as you drive around the city, um, you will see uh, bicycles with uh, blinking white lights on the front uh, that are clearly visible uh, for long distances. Um, I mean by uh, people wearing bicycle uniforms with well-appointed bicycles. But, um, uh, but that's just an observation that's neither here nor there. Uh, the fact is, and what really matters, is that the statute does not require a steady white light. And it may well be that a blinking white light that's visible from a distance of 500 feet qualifies. And uh, from uh, my reading of the statute, um, that, that would qualify. And so, uh, so under the evidence before the court, uh, that means that there needs to be a finding of not responsible on that charge too. And so uh, that's how the hearing comes out. And uh, this is going to conclude the hearing. Uh, Mr. Uh, Costanzo, um, if you want to get your paperwork, go through the side door right there and talk to the bailiff, and the bailiff will give you your paperwork. Uh, the officers in this matter are excused. Thank you. Yeah.